Right. I remember you saying that dreams might be something akin to generative adversarial networks, and I'm curious to explore that. What do you mean? How does that come about? So in some sense, we are producing um, hypothetical realities that can predict sensory patterns. And we have a system that acts as a discriminator that uh, tunes these generations of uh, these generative functions to see whether they are able to explain sensory data. And the most important discriminator is your perceptual apparatus that is uh, connected to your sensory input. That is uh, your retina, your cochlea, and so on. So by and large, your thalamus, which is the big switchboard that connects uh, the different brain regions and your sensory input. So in, in some sense, your imagination is being used to predict sensory data. And the set of functions that uh, is closely predicting the next batch of sensory data is what you experience as reality. But it's a dream. Every experience of a reality is in some sense a dream state. And the dream states at night are different from the dream states during the day, uh, mostly in two aspects. One is, uh, in, if you, unless you do lucid dreaming, you don't have a consistent sense of agency, which means you cannot recall who you are and you cannot really direct your attention in any way. There is no subject involved. There might be a story about a subject, but uh, the subject is not doing things that can be controlled by the subject. And in a lucid dream, you bring this agent online. You gain a sense of agency and a sense of control and can direct your attention according to control parameters, right? This means now you have a system that is exerting control based on uh, the expectation of maximizing some kind of reward in some of the dimensions that your mind cares about. And, uh, but, but at night, the second thing that happens beside the agency is you are no longer in touch with your sensory apparatus. So you have no way to access what's happening on your retina anymore. You mean in the which, external world? Yes. So uh, everything that uh, plays in your cortex, uh, plays out in your cortex, is now originating in your cortex. There is some slight interference with the sensation of color or whether you need to urinate or smell. Smell translates relatively well into dreams for most people. Uh, but by and large, you cannot sense what happens in the outside world. And uh, this is not going to enter your dreams in any consistent way. Instead, you are only going to use your mental representations to make sense of other mental representations. If dreams are for learning, why is it that we don't remember them? Why does it go away? Uh, it's largely because dreams play out as situations uh, of things that has never happened. But and, we do that uh, all the time in our own head when we're just thinking about speaking to someone like a boss, like, what am I going to say to that boss? How do I get a raise? How do I get mm -hmm. not get fired? Yes, but all these things are prefaced as this doesn't happen. This is an imagination of an imaginary situation. I'm playing out the following things. Uh, uh, these things have, uh, will happen in reality in the following way. And then you can compare them with reality and you can use this to tune your imagination to make it better next time. Whereas in a dream, your construction of reality itself is changed. For instance, you see objects from perspectives that you've never seen them from. You might be, have a flying dream as a result, right? You see the world from a top-down perspective in a, as a child. I think many children have flying dreams for that reason, that basically your brain is generating new perspectives of known objects. And so you can recognize them from these new perspectives. That's, uh, it's very useful, but it's not very useful to remember that you can fly because you can't. Do you know of any studies that have been done about people who can recall their dreams versus people who can't? And if they report higher life satisfaction, if any of those groups. No, I'm unaware of that. So I, I don't know how uh, if people that can recall their dreams are, are happier than people that can't. And uh, I suspect that uh, it should be possible to uh, change the equilibrium of most people that cannot recall their dreams in such a way that they can or to wake them up at the right moment and that they will be able to remember their dreams if you uh, wake them up during REM phases. But I'm unaware of these studies. I'm not a sleep scientist. If, if all we did was dream, is that real? Well, all we do is dream in a way, right? So every perception of reality is a trance state. It's a dream state. There is no reality that is, it can be sensed. It's only this VR that uh, you are entranced to believing that it's real. It's a movie that your uh, mind is showing to the self and the uh, self is recording in some sense what happens at its boundary with, with this attentional protocol. And we can uh, partially recreate these binding states later on as the memories of states that you think you have been conscious of.
And this is all there is. There, this is only the stream.